From the lofty Himalayas and the sprawling Acadia National Park, I've seen the Milky Way with my naked eyes, each time equally awestruck and mesmerized. Once, during the Acadia Park visit in 2018, I also watched the International Space Station pass through the canvas. However, when I returned to the cities, sometimes I tr found myself trying to search for the raw night view while looking over the horizon. But the skylines of New Delhi, New York, Boston, or DC greeted me instead. Despite being beautiful, these blocks of buildings left me thinking. If human exploration, development, and construction could obstruct my night view, could it also cause a situation of obstruction in space? In hindsight, every time I broached this question, I was en route to learning a new facet about the debris in space. First, as a sixth grader hoping to work in space. Second, as a Fletcher Tufts grad student working on a space-focused capstone. And third, as someone actively working in this field. Today, with across-the-board experience, graduate degree specialization in international law and tech policy, and work experiences in the space tech industry, UN agency, and academia, I know that outer space also known as the final frontier, has become a crowded and polluted domain. I am here to explain how space is getting crowded, what the devastating consequences are, and why there is an urgent need to take immediate actions to curtail them. The crowded material in space is called space debris, which is the loose bunch of trash orbiting around the Earth. This collateral pollution of space exploration is leading to the new tragedy of the commons a situation where individuals with access to a shared resource, also called a common, act in their own interest and in doing so, ultimately deplete the resource. Much like plastic in the oceans, overgrazing of public lands, overfishing in the oceans and pollution of the atmosphere, we're also contaminating space with growing quantities of pieces ranging in size and shape, from softballs to marbles to paint flecks, including dead satellites and wayward nuts and bolts. All these are revolving above our heads. Traveling at extremely high speeds, these pieces, even when tiny, can damage functional satellites and other orbiting devices on which several crucial services depend, like weather forecasting, earth science research, climate monitoring, space-based communications, and humanitarian relief. Just imagine one day, only one day on Earth without internet, TV connectivity, or weather forecasts or zero signal on your phones, iPads, or laptops, or seizing of the global positioning systems, navigation, and timing for those traveling by land, air, or sea. The disappearance of such services that are our lifelines nowadays could cause immediate global disruptions. Such disastrous effects could stem entirely from just a single piece of debris and the ripple effect it could cause. As the amount of debris grows, the risk of collision also grows. Collisions create more debris that further create a chain reaction of collisions and debris, also known as the Kessler syndrome, and the chances of destruction in space multiplies exponentially. From 2017 to 2021, roughly between the time that I visited Acadia until today, there has been a fourfold increase in the number of times objects in the lower Earth orbit came within one kilometer of another object. In other words, very close to causing some kind of serious damage. As the debris population grows, this trend will only see a dramatic rise. These damages could make all kinds of disastrous cases a reality. For example, space debris could destroy a functional satellite, like in 2009, a defunct Russian satellite, which was itself a piece of debris, crashed into a func functional US communication satellite. Even more directly threatening for people on Earth, space debris could fall out of orbit and collide with Earth's surface, like in 2020 when an 18-ton debris piece scraped over LA and New York City's Central Park before landing in the Atlantic Ocean. Debris could also cause the loss of astronaut lives in the International Space Station, like in the Oscar-winning movie Gravity. It is also possible that debris forms a dense shield-like layer around the Earth and hamper spacecraft liftoffs for space exploration. Therefore, handling the space debris problem now could help avoid a catastrophic future 
in which we could potentially become prisoners on our own planet. To mitigate this issue and effectively utilize the Earth's orbit for future exploration, a simultaneous and collaborative approach of technology, regulation, and international cooperation is needed. This will not only eliminate existing space debris, but also prevent future generation of debris. While space debris presents hazards, space debris mitigation presents an opportunity for smart entrepreneurs to solve these issues. Companies have developed devices like nets, harpoons, and magnets that can catch and tow away the existing debris. They're also working on building reusable spacecraft and devising solutions to deorbit satellites once their missions are complete to reduce new debris creation. Others are providing precise and accurate intelligence and data to help predict and avoid collisions. On the regulatory side, there is the Liability Convention and several international guidelines formulated by the United Nations Office of Outer Space Affairs that are in place. If these guidelines are followed, adopted by national legislations and fully implemented, we can check the debris problem. By minimizing the debris released during normal operations, avoiding intentional destruction of satellites, also known as anti-satellite tests, and limiting the abandonment of spacecraft in space, after the end of their mission. In short, creating a cleaner and more compliant environment in space for the future. Lastly, a step towards international cooperation would go a significantly long way towards diminishing the impact of space debris. One such effort includes a space sustainability rating and an interagency space debris coordination committee that encourages responsible behavior in space influences cooperation for mitigation guidelines, and develops best practice standards. Additionally, an open architecture data repository is in the works to establish and maintain a cloud-based platform to provide stakeholders across the globe with tracking information about orbiting satellites and debris. Despite the many mechanisms and potential solutions set in place, we're somehow still lagging. There are two crucial challenges that need to be overcome for a more sustainable and debris-free space environment. The first challenge concerns national security, as space cleanups are often viewed through a national defense lens. Nations worry that an adversary state picking up their dead satellites or any part with potential important data and technological know-how could jeopardize their national security. Second is the economic aspect of financing space debris cleanup. One cleanup mission is projected to cost over $100 million. This is expensive. However, does this supersede the losses caused by an internet and communications blackout resulting from a damaged satellite? Or the loss of astronaut lives due to a damaged International Space Station? Or the inability of spacecrafts to leave the Earth for future cosmic explorations due to increased collision risks? or the millions of dollars and manpower required to rebuild and replace damaged satellites, communication systems, and manned vehicles in space. A simple cost-benefit analysis would say no. It may be true that the issue of space debris does not directly affect you or I in our daily lives here on Earth yet, that it still sounds far-fetched and hypothetical. But in reality, a failure to act now could have long-lasting impacts on our everyday life. Do you remember the issue of the depleting ozone layer that all millennial and Gen Z kids learned as an urgent issue in school? It wasn't as though that the impact of ozone depletion had become starkly visible or apparent. It was a looming threat, and there was no time to lose in preventing a future blighted by skin cancers, cataracts, and damaged ecosystems. Experts had raised the alarm and the world listened, creating the Montreal Protocol, which phased out global use of ozone-depleting chemicals. Today, the ozone layer recovery is an environmental success story. Space debris is a similar looming intensifying threat, capable of disrupting our lifelines. The ozone layer crisis showed that when science and political willpower join forces, the results can change the world. Similarly, a combined effort of technology, regulation, and multilateralism can curb the growing issue of space debris. It would shift the focus of companies to develop more sustainable technologies. 
With an improved and more compliant outer space environment, scientists and astronomers can redirect and refocus their attention to discoveries and inventions and further their advancements in space without a constant threat of debris-related mishaps. For world leaders, it would be one less frontier to contest. Rather, cooperation and team efforts in space can be instrumental in enabling better relations on Earth. You and I could look up at the night sky, go stargazing, trace the International Space Station, or dream about going to space, unhindered by the threat of space debris. Taking care of the final frontier is important because all the space above our head that extends endlessly into outer space is like non-renewable resources, like our forests, the ocean's biodiversity, and clean air. If we do not treat it as a limited resource, we may wake up one day to the epiphany of the tragedy of the commons, no longer being able to enjoy all the benefits that space has and continues to give to our lives. So, in the journey from overcrowded to less crowded outer space, can the common man and woman contribute to the cosmos? Absolutely yes. Space is space for everyone. We can play a part too. If not as a career, even as good Samaritans, getting involved with various kinds of organizations or simply being aware. Because from awareness comes great inventions, thought leaders, experts, more knowledge spreaders and enthusiasts. I, Sainjati Malik, am one such enthusiast, signing off. Cheers to a less crowded, cleaner, safer and more sustainable outer space. Godspeed and Ad Astra.